I'm working on the 54 Chevy. A problem I've had since I've owned this thing is the brakes have been screwed up. Um, just a mushy pedal, lots of pedal travel. Braking is, you know, it's decent, but it's just not where it should be. It doesn't stop as quick as it should be. Really hard to lock up the tires, all the usual stuff. I've tried everything um, to try to fix this. I've changed the master cylinder. Um, to put this one, this is from a, a late 60s Impala four wheel drum brake. Should work fine. This is a four wheel drum brake car, um, but it doesn't. I've tried adjusting the, the brakes, that didn't work. Um, the only way I got really good brakes out of this thing was to adjust the brakes way out, almost dragging too much. And what that did was it overheated the brakes. So they would drag when they got hot. So that didn't work. Um, and I think part of the problem is I'm using an aftermarket pedal assembly. Um, it's called a Walton pedal because on this 54 Chevy, the master cylinder originally was under the floor and it had a weird contraption where the underflow master cylinder had the brake pedal attached to it on a pivot. Um, I didn't want any of that. So, uh, this was converted. I didn't do the conversion. It was like this when I got it, but the car wasn't running. It had a blown engine. So I, the brakes had never been used, had never been tried with the, with the Walton pedal in place. It's a really high quality pedal unit, but uh, it doesn't work too well with the setup I've got. Um, so I have a theory as to what might be happening here. And my theory is that this master cylinder, I believe it's a one inch bore, meaning that the piston inside is one inch wide. What I'm thinking is it's not pushing enough fluid to activate all four drum brakes cylinders like it should. Um, to give you an analogy, if you were to stick a garden hose in a two inch pipe, you're never going to get pressure out of that. No matter how much pressure is in that garden hose, you're never going to have good pressure in the pipe um, because there's just not enough volume being pushed through that pipe. I think that's the problem here. I think I'm not pushing enough volume of fluid to operate the, uh, the four brake cylinders like I need to, which is why the pedal travel is so long. I don't know if that's true or not, um, but I've tried almost everything else. Everything is new. Uh, the entire brake system is new. Um, lines, connectors, uh, drums, uh, shoes, springs, cylinders, everything, including this master cylinder. So this is one of the last few things to try. Um, if this doesn't work, then my next thought is I'm going to have to install larger lines um, coming off the master cylinder to the first junction block to try to get more volume through there. I'm hoping I don't have to do that. Um, so I've got a master cylinder here that's got a one and one eighth inch bore. Now you may think an eighth of an inch isn't a lot, but it is when you're talking about three sixteenths brake line that is used in this car. Um, I got this from Speedway Motors. It's specially designed to fix the problems like I am having. Um, it's a cool unit. It's really heavy. There's ports on both sides, so you can use it for GM or Ford. The ports that you don't need, it comes with plugs right there that you just put in, which I've already done. Um, and the bore is here. This is the bore and it's an extra large bore. Now note that this master cylinder has a recessed piston, which means the hole in here goes pretty deep. You see I'm sticking my finger way in there. Um, be aware of that if you buy this. Um, it does come with an extended pin, um, but it's a whole lot easier if your existing system is already set up to use a a deep bore master cylinder like mine is and like a lot of a lot of four wheel drum systems are so i'm going to put this in and uh, see if i can get my pedal pressure up where it should be and the brakes to work right because i'm disconnecting the lines i'm gonna have to bleed the entire system these two things have to come out this line i actually have to replace because this fitting is too large for the new master cylinder the ports in the new master cylinder, the, the threaded 
threaded outlets are really small. Um, there, this is a three a three sixteenths line. That's what size they are. So that big fitting there, for whatever reason, it's there. It just isn't going to work. So I'm going to replace the whole line. It's not long. It's about two and a half feet. It just goes down to a junction block. Um, this one can work just fine. I'll just take the adapter off. I tried to get an adapter that will adapt this line to the new master cylinder. I can't find it. I went to Napa. They can't find a part number for it. So I'll just change the line. Um, it's not that big of a deal on a car this old. It's, it's right right there. And because everything's new, I don't have to worry about things snapping off or anything like that. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. The master cylinder is easy to come out. There is a bolt here and a bolt on the other side. Usually you can just take these nuts off here. Um, in this case, the Walton pedal requires a, uh, a wrench on the other side because it's actually a bolt rather than a stud that goes into the firewall. But I've already got them loosened up, as you can see. So it'll be real easy to just pull this out and change it. I'm going to have to make sure that I catch all the drippings here because this is all painted nice under the hood in this Chevy. Um, so I'm not going to actually show you that because it'll be too hard to have a phone um, focused in on all that while I'm trying, to, trying not to create a mess. But uh, I'll pick this back up when uh, the new master cylinder is in and I'll show you how to connect the pin to the brake pedal inside. Starting to remove the master cylinder now. I'm going to let it drain so it doesn't make a mess. Um, I've disconnected the first fitting. This is the type of wrench you use on brake lines, not a regular wrench. Um, these are pretty soft and you need a wrench that wraps around it like this to keep them from, from stripping the head. Um, up here, it's not that big of a deal because they're, they're out of the rust and out of the, the water, so they're going to come off pretty easy. But down below, you really need these. The, this is called a flare wrench, and they come in different sizes. This particular fitting is pretty big because it's so strange. It's a 916 size. Um, but we're going to let this drip, and uh, then I'll take the master cylinder out. Then this line I'll completely replace um, so I can get the smaller head. Now what I could do is cut this off, cut the line and reflare the line. But as I look at this line a little closer, I don't like the looks of this. This is a really narrow bend right here. It doesn't come through in the camera that well, but this is super narrow. So I'm just gonna get rid of this line anyway um, and just replace it outright. I've got the line out, so these are the bends that I need to recreate. This stuff is so thin that I'm pretty sure I can bend it with my hands. This is what I've got to work with. It's a completely straight piece. This is a 30-inch uh, piece. Um, that should be enough. So on to the bending. The master cylinder is now mounted. You can see with the bolt right there and one on the other side the same way. Put lock nuts uh, on those bolts so they don't back out ever. It's your brakes we're talking about. There's a few things that still need to be done. I have not bled the master cylinder. Just like you have to bleed the system, you have to bleed the master cylinder. And most people do it in a vise. Um, they put the master cylinder in a vise and they bench bleed it from there. But this is a manual brake car. There's no reason I can't bench bleed it in the car. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, but first, remember that pin I talked about that goes inside the master cylinder? The other side connects to the brake pedal and I need to adjust that. So that's next. All right, this is difficult to shoot under here. Um, but you see the master cylinder sticking out right there and here is the brake pedal pushing on it. So you don't want the brake pedal pushing on the master cylinder, pushing it in at all. Because that might preload the brakes, which you don't want. But you do want it um, close, right up tight. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit of a game. 
um, you need just the tiniest bit of clearance um, from the pin to the inside of the master cylinder. But you don't want to overdo it because it'll preload the brakes. You don't want to underdo it because you're not supposed to have any um, play there. And uh, you don't want that pin moving around inside the master cylinder. So I got it adjusted up right now. Now I'm going to go on to the bench bleeding. Bench bleed is hooked up. The idea is you hook up to the outlet ports on the master cylinder. You put fluid in the master cylinder and you run these tubes up so that they're below the surface of the fluid. And as you press the brake, the fluid in the air will come through these tubes in a circular fashion back into the master cylinder. The air will make bubbles and come out and you'll have all the air out of the master cylinder. In order to get that to happen, you have to press the brake pedal. And on power brake cars, this is really not the way to go, but a manual brake, you can do it. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm just going to press on the brake and uh, until I stop seeing bubbles come out the master cylinder. I'm worried this, this bench bleeder kit's real crap. Usually these things thread into the master cylinder. Instead, these push in. So if they come out and I'm pressing the, the master cylinder down through the brake pedal, it's going to make a mess. So I'm going to have to uh, put a rag over it or something because I don't want it to spray on the paint. Brake fluid is super corrosive to paint. No matter how old or how new the paint is, it's super corrosive. So you can't really see this on camera, but I'm pushing the brake pedal down. I can hear, oops, I can hear the air going through and you might be able to see it on camera, the air bubbles coming through. And as I let off, it just sucks fluid back in from the reservoir, which is exactly what I want. And I just do this till I don't see any more bubbles. Quite a few bubbles in there. As one would expect. And I can hear all the air coming through. Still some air in the rear. The front looks pretty much done. Yeah, the front's done. And it looks like the rear is, is almost done too. Yep, so I've got the air out. So that's all it takes to bench bleed. Now what I do, didn't leak at all, surprisingly. Wow, shocking. Um, now what I do is I just take the bench bleed kit off, hook my brake lines up, refill the master because all the air it displaces is now filled with fluid and start to bleed the rest of the brakes, starting with the passenger side rear, then driver's side rear, passenger side front, driver's side front. It's going to take a while. Um, I'm by myself, so this is going to take some time. One thing about master cylinders, do not fill them all the way to the top. They're not designed to be filled to the top. They're designed to be uh, a certain amount below, usually around three quarters of an inch or so. Um, but check, check with the manufacturer on the master cylinder for that. The reason is when the master cylinder fluid, the brake fluid gets hot, it expands. And if this thing is full, the fluid has nowhere to go. So guess what happens? It applies your brakes and you don't want that. So this master cylinder is real easy. There's a ridge right there that tells me exactly how far to fill it. Most don't have that, but this one's pretty easy. So I'm going to fill it up and hook these lines up and start to bleed. Typically, the way to bleed brakes is you get underneath and you have somebody pump the pedal a few times till there's pressure, hold their foot on the brake, and you open the brake bleeder. You do that a few times per wheel, but I'm by myself. I don't have anybody to push the pedal while I'm in the back. So I'm using this thing, one, one person brake, ble brake bleeder. You put some fluid in it. You hook this line up to the um, bleeder valve the output of the bleeder valve and this line you just leave free and what happens is 
when you press them, when, when uh, you put this on the bleeder valve and go inside the car and press the brakes, the open bleeder valve just lets both air and fluid into here. And when you let off the pedal, it sucks up fluid. So you're doing the same thing I just did with the uh, bleeding the master cylinder, just you're doing it uh, at the brake cylinder level. So you can go in the car and leave this hooked up to the open, uh, the cracked open um, brake bleeder and just press the brake um, multiple times and you'll get all the, the air out. And you'll notice that the fluid in here will rise so you know everything's getting through. And you just do that and uh, move on to the next wheel. I hope you can see this. It's, uh, it's pretty hard to get a shot under here, but I'm under the car right now. And you see, there's the hose. This is the inside of the uh, passenger side rear, the right rear. And I've got the hose on the end of the bleeder screw. And you notice I've already got the wrench right here on the bleeder. It just makes it a whole lot easier if the wrench, wrench is already there because you can open and close it without removing the hose. The hose goes down into the one-man bleeder, which I have sitting on a box to keep it nice and level. I don't want it just hanging by the hose. And the next thing I'm going to do is just open up the bleeder by moving that wrench. Um, with the bleeder open, then I go inside and I stop pressing the brake and blow all the uh, air out. And when I do that, when I come back to check it, this thing, it has some fluid in it now. Um, it should be more full. So the rears are done. Um, I forgot to mention, make sure the master cylinder cover is on and secured while you're doing this. And check the fluid level because you are pushing fluid out. You don't want to empty the master cylinder. If you push enough fluid out to dry one of the banks of the master cylinder, you got to start all over. Um, so I just put a little more fluid in because I have some fluid in the one person bleeder that uh, you know was displaced. So now I'm moving on to the front. Okay, this is the moment of truth. Backing out of the garage, it felt a little bit better. I could hear the, the actual front wheels engaging for a change. So this driveway is super steep. Let's see how it does. This certainly, certainly seems to be better. Certainly have more pedal and it's less spongy. this at speed to see just how much better. So we're going down a fairly steep incline right now. Yeah, that's better. A lot better. Oh yeah. This is probably as close to new as it's going to get. It's not pulling. I'm not holding the wheel right now. I'm not pulling at all when I hit the brakes. So they're adjusted decently. steep hill. Let's see how we do. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is way better. Finally. Finally. Okay. Looks like we have a success. All right. So what you all this mean? Um, basically the larger bore master cylinder push more fluid through the lines, which made the braking system more efficient uh, because the brake cylinders were able to go their full uh, operating range. Whereas before, I just wasn't pushing enough volume to make that happen. 
Um, I hope this was in informational for you. Be careful when working on brakes. Make sure you always work on brakes with someone that, that really knows what they're doing. If you've never done this before, uh, have someone help you that, that has. But at least you have a general idea of what to do. Some troubleshooting tips. If your anti car has a, a spongy pedal with a lot of pedal travel, sometimes it's other things, but that's what it was in this case, um, was the master cylinder. So enjoy. If you like this type of video, subscribe, because there'll be lots more.